Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vernon Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX TV in San Francisco and Russell Jackman. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. Uh, today, we're going to go again with more baseball quotes. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, eh, I think you'll, you'll get. It's a, some of them a little hard, but I think you'll still get them. Uh, so we've got a, a bunch of things to talk about. One sure. is sports scholarships with yeah. regard to the fact that uh, a lot of classes are going to be online. Students aren't going to be, you know, potentially on the campus, games being canceled, that sort of thing. Uh, my wife actually, and I don't know if, it, I, I'm guessing my wife came up the, with this idea because I hadn't heard of it, but do you remember when they were talking about no fans in the stands? Right. You can get like a picture of yourself in yes. there. Which is a little kind of silly because unless they are gonna pan the audience, I mean, I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> However, she made the point, she says, why don't they put cameras like in the spot where you would have been sitting? And then that way, it's almost like you're at the game and you could, you know, you could watch from that camera. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll talk more so, we'll so, so, okay, all, all we'll right, okay. about that next time because right. that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, talking about the, uh, the Redskins changing their name. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also a fan that got hit by a foul ball last year uh, from, of course, the Astros. So we'll mm -hmm. see how that kind of plays out there. And uh, then the NBA allowing almost anything on the back of uh, a jersey. Um, and we're kind of curious as to see how they decided what names are allowed and what names are not. Right. I mean, there's certain things you can say, certain things you can't. All right, uh, this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, still providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding over 7.5%. Now, where can you get 7.5% with relative security nowadays? Hard I don't know. But they're hard to find. Check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Russell, you got to stop talking so much. And we're going to be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Again, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Russell Jackman. Okay, so, you want me to say something? I got yeah, something yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hail to the Chiefs! Yeah. Hail the, victory! The, the, the Warriors? The, 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 the Red Tails? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Fill in the blanks. Well, why don't they just call them the Hogs? I mean, that's... I, the, that was my choice. I think that they, was your choice? That's just the little. Hogs. I mean, there were all those years where they all wore pig masks. And, yeah. You know, they, they were, they, they, that's a, a throwback to the uh, offensive line that they yeah. had the, of the 90s. Last time the Washington uh, fill in the blanks were a decent football team. Uh, but, they would be the, they would be the Hogs coached by Joe Bugle in the mid 1980s. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that in the 80s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Russ so Grimm, Jeff Bostick, Mark May. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe they Jacoby. Got in yeah, Jacoby. And uh, was Fred Dean on there then? No, Fred Dean was no. not a part of the no. Washington Redskins. No. no. No, Okay, who am I thinking of? Um, well, I just named you four uh, of them. There's, okay, there's, well, there's there you five. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see here. Okay, let's start off with the Redskins. Okay. Uh, I can't use that name anymore. Well, no. okay. Well, the former Redskins, which, I mean, I, I got to I gotta say, we talked about this last week. That is kind of an obvious uh, bad term to use. I mean, Chiefs to me is not a big deal. Seminoles, I don't think is a bad name. Uh, but the Redskins, yeah, that, that's a derogatory term. Um, so let's see here. Uh, okay, now get this. Uh, why don't the Redskins have a new nickname yet? Uh, nickname planned yet? Uh, and probably because some realtor in Alexandria beat them to the punch and trademarked almost every single possible new Redskins name. That's you why. That's why the organization is is not announcing this for quite some time because they want to get all the legalese out of the way as far as trademark and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, the, the, the that that redskin nickname had been around since 1937, and mm -hmm. throughout the years it's been a controversial nickname. And then the, the the current owner Daniel Snyder has just been in complete denial, denial, denial mm -hmm. until the corporate. Washington franchise sponsors weighed in and went, we're paying a lot of money, change the name. And then we have revelation relented. comes, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's kind of, everything is kind of based on, on 
economics, right? That's what Sports Econ 101. Yeah, that's so why we're here. That's why we're here. So this guy, I mean, it's almost like when when the internet first happened, um, I, I think there was some guy who just ran around trying to trademark every potential, uh, you know, one for, let, let's say, IBM, you know, IBM.com, right. uh, internationalbusinessmachines.com, whatever, whatever, just so that he could. Uh, it's called cyber on. squatting. It's called Say cyber again? squatting. Mm -hmm. Cyber squatting. Cyber squatting. That's right. That's the yeah, that's, that's the term. So I guess this guy kind of did the same thing. Uh, I mean, how much does it cost to trademark a name? Well, trademarking a name is different than registering a name through your uh, through a domain server. So cyber squatting on a name is costs almost nothing. It costs maybe twelve bucks a year, fifteen okay. dollars a year. Um, trademarking is a more significant matter and so that's where i think that they're going to most of the the guy the guy that's been squatting on those names will probably wind up losing because washington will the franchise will trademark whatever new name they are and once you have a trademark that trumps what your registration is because mm. to make a trademark work this is uh right in my bailiwick so okay. i know quite a bit about it to get a trademark to work, you have to show that you've entered the stream of commerce of the, uh, so that the other side is aware of your trademark gotcha. being used in commerce yeah. prior to the other person actually getting a trademark. So in other words, if you have just the domain name that someone else files for the trademark, once they get the trademark in there, if you haven't filed for that trademark, <laughs> you will, your domain name is going to have to be uh, sacrificed over to the uh, owner of the trademark. Gotcha. Now, so, so, it could take a while to, to go through the system. It could take six months. So it'll be really interesting that, you know, Snyder being such an idiot, waited till like a month before the season started to try to change the name. If you were gonna change the name, you should have been doing it like last year. Yeah. And, and then he would walk into the season with a trademark firmly in place and he'd be able to, uh, to represent the team owning that intellectual property. Right now, he doesn't because he's a complete and utter moron. Well, so how about getting rid of the word kin and just making it the Reds? It's very similar to the Red Stockings of uh, the Cincinnati. As long as they don't pick the Warriors. I, I That's the worst <laughs> possible name they could pick. Just I know that you have the, the football giants and the football, uh, the baseball giants, but nobody really likes having to deal with two teams of completely different geographies having the same name. Well, but well, also I, I can give you a little insight b between b behind that one. Years ago, Daniel Snyder wanted to start a an indoor football franchise and for whatever reason, he was in love with name of that franchise, the Warriors. So that's why mm. that's all but just been kind of stirred up because like, oh, he's got a football team now that has to rename its branding and so that's why the Warriors out there has been prevalent in the talks. I've also heard red tails as well. Yeah. Now, is, are um, is the, is the name Warriors almost synonymous with Native Americans? I mean, do, does one think where it came from for the Golden State Warriors? The Golden State Warriors were originally known yeah. as the Golden State Indian Warriors. But but I mean, just in general, when uh, except for the movie The Warriors that came out in 1979, which was about a, a Brooklyn or a, I mean, a Coney Island gang. Uh, when one thinks of warriors, one usually thinks of Native Americans, don't they? So it's 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 not a derogatory term, but it's still kind of staying on that Native American theme. So they probably well, it, dep it depends on the different. branding. I mean, if you're if you're using a Native American as your symbol, then yeah, that's when it's just a Golden offensive. Gate Bridge. It's a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. That's not necessarily connoting anything other than just the Bay Area. True. True. So okay. it's. It's, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and my friend and I were, were going through and we we're saying, well, if you're mad at the, the, the Warriors for that connotation, shouldn't you also be mad at the Vikings? Because they were nothing but, you know, sackers oh. and pillagers and rapers and plunderers. Shouldn't you be upset at the Cowboys? Shouldn't you be upset at the Buccaneers? Well, wait, 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 hold on. Cow uh, okay, so- Cowboys uh, didn't do a lot of nice things to the West, man. <laughs> yeah, but, but actually though, well, the thing is, actually, if you go back in time, do you, do you know that most of the Cowboys were black? I, don't I did know, know that. A, a lot of people didn't know that. I mean, that's, that's, that's actually what, you know, the true Cowboys way back then. Even, even the 49ers did a whole lot of terrible things 
to the the population of. Well, what uh, about the what about the jets? They're they're polluting the environment with all there the. There you uh, go. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, you come know. on. You know, but going. Vikings though is is a, is a little bit of a. I mean, we all kind of look at Vikings as as you know, hey, and I mean Raiders also theoretically. No, I've seen that, the, the TV but, show. I know what Vikings did. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I know, but I mean, <laughs> but I mean, uh, Norsemen, I think is the is the correct political term for that, right? Yeah, because Vikings denote the Norsemen who were a little bit more pillager. How about the pillagers? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that's I, what the Ra that's what the Raiders did. They you yeah, know, they came the and pillaged and you. took what they wanted and laughed yeah. when they conquered and won. I mean, it's and funny because you know, except for except for the Cubs. Every uh, moniker or uh, mascot, you know, emblem always seems to be mean, right? You know, you've got the uh, the bears, or I don't the know tiger. What you, do the you know, you don't see tigers with little, you know, I like. Don't know what you do with the heat. <laughs> I don't know what you do with the magic. The magic, yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, wizardry. Ooh, that's bad. Wizardry. Okay. Hey guys, first commercial break here. Baseball quotes. Already. Already. Okay. Believe it. Wow. Okay. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1979. Right. He was asked at his induction induction ceremony, "Who was the best player uh, that you've ever seen in your career?" And his answer: "I don't mean to be bashful, but I was." <laughs> who? Okay. Who's this player? Who said that? So again, you got to think 1979, right? And there's generally, for all intents and purposes, a five-year wait before you get in the Hall of Fame, right? Okay. You know, except so, for like so, 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 they, they so they were done. So they were done in 74, 75. They were exactly. Done. All right. Okay. That's our trivia question. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be right back. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vernon Glenn and Russell Jackman. Here is our first trivia question. Uh, baseball quotes. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1979. He was asked at his induction ceremony, who was the best player that you've ever seen in your career? Mm. And his answer, well, I don't mean to be bashful, but I was. Who is this player? Sounds like a Reggie Jackson I can Jackson tell you it was not Ron Santo. No, it okay. sounds like a Reggie Jackson quote, but I, I don't think. No, Reggie was still playing. How about, uh, how about Willie Mays? Didn't he finish yes. up with the Mets? That, wow. Willie, that's right. Willie Mays actually said that. And you know wow. what? I, I can't disagree with him. <laughs> he was definitely the greatest ball player I ever saw. I thought he was more humble than that. I, yeah, well, that's what he says. He, you know, he doesn't mean to be bashful, but <laughs> or I guess what he meant was, you know, to, to stay with some humility. Okay, so uh, moving on here. Uh, so just before we got on, we were talking uh, on the air before the show, we were talking about sports scholarships mm -hmm. and the fact that you know, how's that going to work if they can't play their sport and there's online classes versus being in school? Vern, uh, why don't you give us some uh, insight on that? What do you think? Well, it's a big bone of contention in, in college sports. We've seen the Ivy League cancel all sports for the fall. We've seen the Big Ten and the Pac-12 go conference football games only. And that's just, that's just kind of a start. Other Power Five conferences are expected to follow suit, but it's not so much the scholarships, it's the revenue. Because for a lot of these universities, a major part of the revenue comes from the football program. And it's the football program revenue that all the other sports kind of essentially nurse from to kind of fund their, their, their thing. So in the case of Stanford here in the Bay Area- Yeah, they got rid yeah, of they, 12. They have 30, they, 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 they had, 36 varsity sports, yeah. 36 of them. So 12 now will yeah. be cut at the end of the school year because of revenue. And it's not, and, and, and here's a school with what, $20 billion in endowment. They can't, the athletic program just can't walk across the street and dip from that honey pot to kind of feed themselves. It, does, it just doesn't work that way. They won't, they won't allow it. So they have to hope for some 11th hour, you know, check being cut in order to maybe save those programs. Well, from the alumni? Is, or, I mean, it, would it be from the alumni they're going to try to get that money from? Well, you, 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 you've you seen it done with fundraisers. You've seen it done with with, with, with really rich alumni. And I guess the most famous one is John Aralaga. You see his name over all these buildings on the campus of Stanford because he's the one that's cutting that check to, to, to build these things. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, they might go to him, uh, but uh, it, it's it's... You know, it's it's a real it's a real problem. 
uh, for, for, for some of these sports, many of them Olympic sports, that, 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 that have been cut. Well, Russell, any thoughts on that? I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just amazed that uh, these schools have, so, have earned so much money from these students in the past. And now that students need a break because of the, the COVID virus situation, these schools clutch their, their purses and go, yep. you need money from me? You need money from <laughs> us? How dare you ask us for money? We, we need well, this. Or, or their attitude is, hey, everybody's got to stand on, you know, every, every uh, sport's got to stand on its own. Uh, but like you said, so football feeds into the other sports. You know, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I said maybe that's what their attitude is. I got a couple of college kids in my house, and then I have a couple of nephews that are at Harvard, and it, it's it, it's funny. Are they are they going to cut any of these students slash parents a break on tuition? Uh uh no. Even though they're going to be online only, uh uh. This is this is what you must pay. Yeah, it, it's crazy, but you see, but you're, you're you're denying these kids of of a complete college experience and, and it's going on in graduate school too because my daughter's the same thing it's like they're, they're, they're not cutting us any break right yeah. right so 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 you're yeah so your daughter who's cross country i mean essentially all of us we're we're actually paying for them to live where they live to take classes online i mean the only good thing about this is i uh we were a actually able literally I, I kid you not we had signed a lease for a new apartment for her Nine days later, the school finally tells them, oh, by the way, we're going to be doing the online classes. Uh, so, so, then, so what's the status of the lease then? Uh, fortunately, uh, a very good landlord company, um, we told them the situation and they said, well, we will put it online and we'll try to get someone as quickly as we can. And, and they did. I mean, they, they, they were like, with, we only have to pay like five days worth of rent. I mean, she never even physically went to the apartment. We did this all online. And right. so I was very, uh, very pleased to see that, um, you know, the, the shortness of the situation. But again, without the schools telling them ahead of time, you know, kids, they, they, I don't know what they're doing. Russell, you got younger kids because you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're the gonna, youngster we're, of the group. We're, I, I just determined that we're going to spend at least the first month um, still doing distance learning. I can't send them back to school with California having COVID cases on the increase. I'm not going to yeah. risk. I, I mean, that's the thing is, even if. I'm not going to risk my own life. You know, yeah. that's the one thing that, you know, is kind of lost in here. It's not only do the schools want the students to pay their money, but they want them to go back and play games that are possibly risking their lives mm -hmm. to earn the school money. So the, the school yeah. wants it on both ends. They want to earn the money from the tuition and they want the students to go out there and play and generate money for the school, yet putting their lives at risk without any guarantee of their safety. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, you, you got a good point. The fact is, even if uh, you're allowed to have your, your kids go back to school, you're not just going to jump on that bandwagon. You're going to be no. very cautious about sending them back. But here's a, something that's kind of interesting. I, 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 you know, you're, you're the attorney. I'm not. Um, I understand that, like in California, Gavin Newsom, does not even have the authority to, to shut businesses down he, because he, as the governor, he's not allowed to make law. Now he's, he can do things that deal with the safety of California. It's, it's again, sort of like an executive action more than it is a, a law. You're right. He can't make a law out of nowhere, but he can say for the safety of the future of the health, of the individuals in the state, he can take action. Mm. And, 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 and what's the legal punishment if somebody doesn't follow? I guess that's- Now, we've question. never been in a situation like this, no. not since 1918, yeah. where, where, we've been, where we've had someone had to take these sort of steps to keep people in line with, uh, but then in 1918, you didn't have people arguing that wearing a mask was a, a measure of individual freedom. People just wore masks because they had somewhat of a brain in their heads and said that we have to stop the spread of this. The only way to stop the spread of this is to wear a mask. Now you have people you yeah. know, standing up and saying, it's my liberty, I'll get oxygen poisoning if I wear a mask. <laughs> I a job for three straight hours. I must be some sort of freaking Superman. Yeah, exactly. I was able to do that, and I didn't pass out. 
Well, I didn't, you know, well, die I mean, of I, oxygen poisoning or whatever. Well, that's because you, that's that's you had a big hole right here so you could eat, right? Yeah, I breathe through my darn ears. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and also in 1918, they, you know, they didn't have the internet, stuff like that. So, I mean, you the only way to make money was to actually go to work. You couldn't do really too much from from home per se. Right, no. right, right, right. And I think I think with Gavin Newsom, I think he can have his press conference and and, and announce that uh, hey, we're going to put this in place. But I think it's up to the Department of Health to enforce it and 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 cite restaurants who do not fall in line. Yeah, I mean, this, and, and and nobody and nobody wants negative marks like that. But this is where we have one of the big problems is that we have. 50 different states all coming up with different rules on these. Yeah. We don't have a national policy that is saying all outdoor, all indoor dining must stop right now. Mm -hmm. All uh, 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 people that are not wearing masks should be fine. We don't have any of that coming from a national perspective. So these businesses, you know, are all basically on their own and, and ones that are franchises that may, you know, have a uh, franchise in Missouri and also in California are subjected to completely different laws, even though they're the same business. Well, and apparently you can, uh, you can, uh, a church can, ha or a synagogue, synagogue can have people in there. They just can't sing. Because oh. this will not happen in our lifetime. You will not sing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, then, but, but cough all you want. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a, it's a little interesting. In fact, my my uh, on uh, my wife and daughter just went back east to go ahead and um, uh, get the belongings, and we decided to treat them to first class tickets because you know figured it's a little bit less dangerous stuff like that. Do you know that they didn't serve serve any food? I'm and not I'm surprised. Going, I'm, I'm going. Come on, man. And now the thing is, I don't know if they announced that ahead of time. And can you imagine being on a five-hour flight right around lunchtime and, and realizing, wait a minute, what do you mean you don't, you're not serving any food? I mean, you'd think that to be able to, to figure out how to do it. What concerns yeah. me a lot greater is how airlines love to keep people stuck on the tarmac. Oh, I no guess, air oh that's, a, that's, that's another, that's another. For four okay. hours at a time. Wait until someone comes down with COVID from something like oh, that. Oh, good, good point. Oh, they definitely got to change rules on that. All right, second trivia question on baseball quotes. This former right-handed pitcher, so that alleviates half, fifty percent, fifty percent roughly. Seventy-five. Actually, there, I don't think there's quite half the left-handed. Yeah, twenty-five percent. Twenty-five. Okay. The, this former right-handed pitcher who played for four teams in his career said, "It helps if the hitter thinks you're a little crazy." Which of these strikeout specialists said this? Hmm. All right. That's our trivia Is question. Here? What's that? You give us a year? Uh, no, but, uh, well, no, I'll say that. Was, uh, he, was he a starter he would, or was he a reliever? He's a starter, and you would most likely think of him in terms of, he played for a long time in the 70s, 80s, potentially even in the 90s. But I believe his first year was actually in the late 60s. All right? Wow. Yeah, late played, played for a long time. All right, stay with us. Okay. We'll on one-on-one. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here, Vern Glenn over there, Russell Jackman over there. Second trivia question. This former right-handed pitcher who played for four teams in his career said, it helps if the hitter thinks you're a little crazy. Which of these strikeout specialists said this? Now, what was the uh, player you guys were thinking of? Tom Seaver. I Tom was Seaver. thinking of Tom Seaver. Now, now, I'm, now I'm leaning towards Nolan Ryan. I was going to say, they, they played on the same team. Yeah, no, right. Nolan Ryan is my guess. Nolan Ryan, yes, that's correct. He started yeah. with 69 Mets. That's I, interv I interviewed Nolan Ryan after his sixth no-hitter. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And he's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first five, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the sixth one, that was the important well, one. It's only because it was here in the Bay Area. So that's, uh, yeah, that, so that's that, that, was, that was an easy get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so uh, – I, I said earlier, I said, my wife had this idea. Um, if there's no fans allowed, like real human being fans in, uh, the, let's say, baseball in, in a game, then and there was something, I, I remember hearing something about, gee, maybe, you know, what they'll do is they'll have cardboard cutouts of your face or something. Yeah, you know, they started doing that in, in, the, in the, the, the Japanese leagues or the Korean league. I well, think. first they had to replace the porn doll. The, the, yeah, the, uh, the blow-up dolls, true. But... The thing is, okay, so if you have your 
face, I mean, unless the camera pans on you in the audience, you know, I mean, you'd never see yourself. So I don't, I'm not sure what the idea is. However, she brought up the point of, she says, well, what would happen? Let's say you're paying a lot of money for season tickets, which by the way, I don't know how they're handling that. I think I, I believe I believe I saw a price tag so, somewhere around the hundred dollar range for a, a cardboard cutout of yourself to be placed in a seat for the home game. But how would you even know unless again unless they pay, unless the the uh, they will they pay. probably will do that this uh, but, okay okay but uh, and are they offering refunds to season ticket holders that's another question but what she said was let's say you're a season ticket holder and you're you're sitting right behind home plate that's your normal seat. Why don't they, you know, be it, even take the cardboard cutout, whatever, but put one of those little security camera type things on where you would be sitting so that you could, you know, and they, and you get some kind of an app where you could watch the game from where your seat would be. Because That's a great idea. Almost camera. like a little mini GoPro thing. Yeah, you just exactly. stick it in there. Yeah. And, that, and that is your point of view. Bingo. And you just go and you just access it and just watch it. Yeah. Your point because of watching view. at home is better than going to the park. You get so much more, but you get better angles. Yeah, but you, you, could do, better. No, you could do both. You could still watch it on TV. You know, you can still have that. But then you'd have a special app where you could see it as though you were watching from. Now, again, there's a little bit different because unless you've got a little thing on your uh, phone to be able to shift the camera around. Mm -hmm. Like to be able to go, hey, I want to look at the scoreboard. I want to see the pretty girls over here. You know, um, if you're not going to see any pretty girls, you're yeah. see cut <laughs> I want to see right. some pretty cardboard cutouts, though. Um, so then, uh, you need I, to I get out a little bit more. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's going on in your life. You need to get out a little bit more. Oh man, you should have seen that really pretty cardboard cutout I saw. I um, anyway. got some Playboy <laughs> magazines from the '70s, you know? right? <laughs> But, a lot of uh, flat Stanleys in the crowd, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, isn't that a pretty good idea, though? I don't know. I think it's a lot of work, and I don't think most people would do it. I think most people would rather watch the overall game feed. If you're going to watch on TV, you'd rather get the better angles. You'd rather get the better focus. on Because, you know, not everybody has great seats at the at the park. Well, well true. But, I mean, if you, if you have... Yeah, but if you, if you had control over your camera where you could zoom pan tilt yeah you know left right something like that like, in it, place for it, it, at least for the novelty you could just yeah. you could just uh you know get it get a shot of that maybe record it maybe put it up on social media hey yeah. look hey look at the view from my seat exactly i mean for yeah. 75 bucks you can get a, a, a decent camera yeah you know? yeah but automating it and being able to control thousands of cameras and giving people individual controls for thousands of cameras you don't think that's a logistical nightmare? No, you no, know, because you, what you do is you you send in, let's say, your seventy five bucks, and the plus, uh, uh, plus on, aren't on, all these and the field guy. Be... Hold on, the field guy goes ahead and f figures out where your seat is and just puts the camera right there, and then from that point you just figure it out on your phone. Who pays for the camera? Uh, you do the, uh, the the season ticket holder. Okay, so what? Uh, well, who pays for the camera maintenance? Because you can't go in there and just adjust it yourself. You can't even get in the stadium. Well, there's got to be somebody in the stadium. So, 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 so if, if so, if there's a technical issue with your camera, you got to be able to notify somebody, and that technician has to go to your seat and fix the camera. Exactly. Uh, that's it's, true. It's that's a true. Big... So maybe you have to pay an additional, you know, two dollars per game. You know, because there's if there's you know a thousand of this, you could you could probably get one guy to handle all the cameras. Oh, yeah, oh, like 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 a maintenance fee yeah. type thing. Yeah. But what about you know, the fact that we're not even going to be playing in our own? stadiums there's going to be the the bubble locations where they're going to have these things so it's not going to be every single person's always no but that's true you can only do it for your own home games if yes they, if they have them yeah that's true it sounds like it's way too much logistical are you raining on our parade Mr. totally, Jackman? totally. Is that i i i, I bet you though I, I i i bet you just for the sake of people trying to figure things out to do in their downtime, and there's a lot of downtime these days, somebody will look into this. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm see, thinking and see with whether all the it's many, worth the investment. But I'm thinking with all the many complications of doing this, you want to add one more layer of complications onto it. I mean, it's we're lucky enough just to get these guys into the park and actually swinging the damn bats and throwing the damn balls. We're lucky enough to get that accomplished. Adding another layer of complexity onto it Look, if we were doing this for like two, three years in a row, then I'd say, okay, let's we'll look into the cameras for individual seats. Yeah, but Mr. Jackman, a lot of us are just a lot of us are just plain, you know, just pig-headed, hard-headed folks, and then we and we just won't listen to reason. 
That's a lot for six months, guys. That's a lot of work for six months. Don't confuse me with the facts or reason, please. I think right, 20 right. games, maybe I'd, I'd see your side for it. But just for 60 games, and, and 60, and that means 30 of them are going to be your home games. Yeah. So that's a lot of work for 30 games. Well, you're assuming also that, that this will end so that next season will be back to normal. Well, okay, if next right. season is 120 games and nobody can go to the stands – then I'd look into the camera thing. But otherwise, I think for 30 games, that's so much logistical hassle and we don't have anything in place. We would have had to start doing stuff like that during like the spring training period to put yeah. those cameras in place. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. Maybe we'll look at it for next year. All right, uh, so, uh, so the NBA is allowing almost anything on the back of a jersey, except you're not allowed to, well, of course, there's, I guess there's 29 um, specific uh, things, statements, phrases, whatever that you're allowed. Are there? And I'm wondering who's deciding what statements are allowed or what not. Because uh, it, it, like someone had pointed out on the radio, um, you can't say free Hong Kong, right? If you if that was your social right. justice that right. you want to put on there, no, 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 no. And gee, I wonder why. Is it because China has a lot of money situation ties? They do. They do. I, heard, I, I heard they won't also let you use the, the term... <laughs> <laughs> on the jersey. Not allowed to what? not allowed to use that either. LeBron James know? was Le LeBron James was at a Lakers practice the other day and he had a uh, free Woj yeah. sign on his jersey for uh for Woj, of course, is the longtime ESPN NBA writer who's been suspended for saying the wrong things to a certain senator who was speaking out against the freedom of these NBA players. Oh, he said the right things. He just didn't. Oh say no, he said he way. said he said the right things. He just said he just 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 the way he put it. And uh, in in two words, uh, <laughs> two first words. we're beginning with F. So yeah, uh, yeah. fire truck. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, fire truck. <laughs> fire truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've heard that that uh, kids uh, joke. Yeah, or what what word starts with F and ends with U C K? Fire truck. Okay. Fire truck. Yeah. Fire truck. Okay. Uh, so the last thing I got here was a fan was hit by a foul ball last year, mm. uh, and he's suing the Astros, saying that the sign stealing is the reason that the netting wasn't extended enough. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we, you know, basically, you're saying, listen, the ordinarily the netting would have been bigger, but if you're stealing signs, you don't want that much netting, and so that's the reason that he's putting these these uh, theories together. I'd love to read that legal argument. Yeah, I need to hear, we need to hear from the lawyer in the room because yeah. I, I know when you're sitting there, there's an assumption of risk that you must take whenever Absolutely. you know, you're sitting. You, and then there's, there's signs everywhere. And they yeah. and here, and if the Astros weren't involved in the scandal, would this guy still be suing? And he's not suing the baseball player. He's all he's suing is specifically the Astros organization. And again, what are the responsibilities of ball clubs? What, what it'll come down say to, about Aaron Fowl balls? What it will come down to is if they had prior knowledge, or anyone else had been hit by the uh, by the shortened um, screen, if they had been warned about it, or someone else had had that problem. But when it sometimes is is not something that somebody could reasonably predict, then that's not considered a violation. So I think this guy's going to have a really hard time. Yeah. Mm. That's just a little bit too attenuated. To, you know, it's one thing, like, let's say if you, you, you know, you bet on the game or it's another thing and you could reasonably suspect the people that were betting on the game would be, you know, ripped off by the cheating scandal. But you're not thinking that when you do this cheating thing, that's going to necessarily cause physical harm to anybody. Well, you make a good point, though. What about the betting? Uh, how many people are suing because – you know, they bet uh, against the Astros. They should. <laughs> they should be. They should be. I, it's really hard to get your money back from a gambling debt, though. The, the yeah. courts tend to just walk away from that stuff and say. And, and how do you prove that, you know, gee, the fact that the guy knew a fastball was coming, you know, that was the reason why. I mean, obviously, there's every little thing of, of an advantage helps. But to, you know, cause and effect specifically – uh, that would be a little bit challenging. You know, it's funny, it reminds me, during the, I, I was in Vegas uh, to watch the uh, Bears beat the Patriots back in 1985. 
or, or I, I think it was 85 season. So it was January of 86, I think. Mm. And uh, I remember, I mean, you could back then and probably still now you could bet on practically anything. And one of the bets was the coin flip at the beginning of the, yeah, of the game. Still do that. Sure. Okay. Well, but here, here's the difference though. So I'm watching, I'm watching the Super Bowl. And, uh, and, and the announcer, you know, on TV is making, oh, and it's a, f- a flip of the head and, and it's heads. And, you, and, and literally, because I'm watching this with a thousand other people, you hear like 150 people, yeah, yeah, all right. And they left the room and they collected on their bet. They come back and by halftime, the announcer says, you know, it's funny, I, I realized that I said ha- heads, but actually when that coin flip was tossed, it was tails. Ooh. And you, you heard another 200 people yell, yeah, like this, and they went and collected. So I, I think what the, the after that Super Bowl, I think what happened was um, Vegas and probably all gambling places said, you know what, we're not going to pay out anything until the very end of the game and like an hour later just to make sure that we don't have this. Right, and now they show a video of the actual coin. <laughs> they, they, they show it they on the ground, whether it's heads, heads or tails. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys. Third trivia question. This this uh, show went pretty fast. This Hall of Famer, talking baseball quotes. This Hall of Famer who played third base said, "I wouldn't mind seeing someone erase my record of hitting into four triple plays." <laughs> wow. <laughs> who said that? Third That's base pretty amazing. Four triple play. Wow. You got to You got to be. I, I, I. And I guarantee you. Well, it, we we know Ricky Henderson didn't play third base, but it was not somebody fast like Ricky Henderson. All right. Uh, email Edward at sportsecom one hundred one dot com. The answer to this question: This Hall of Famer who played third base said, "I wouldn't mind seeing someone erase my record of hitting into four triple plays." It was not Pie Trainer. Remember him from the Pirates, nineteen twenties. Oh, no, come I on, don't. Baseball fans. <laughs> oh, I, I actually when I, back back in the uh, late '60s, early '70s, I read a, a book about the greatest baseball players of all time. And back then, they thought Pie Trainer was the best third baseman. That was an old book. I think yeah, time is I, there's been a couple of good ones since then. Stay with us, Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Welcome back to well, baseball fan. Welcome, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Russell Jackman and Vern Glenn. Third trivia question, this Hall of Famer who played third base said, I wouldn't mind seeing someone erase my record of hitting into four triple plays. Who said that? Pie trainer. (laughs) No, I said it was not pie trainer. (laughs) My first guess is Brooks Robinson. Yes. Is it? Yes. And that that was a pure, that was pure again. But one of the reasons why I guessed that is because you, you said, this this person was not very fast. Correct. But uh, but Obviously but four triple plays. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but there but there there, I mean, there might be. I mean, there's not that many pure third basemen in the Hall of Fame, and Good so point. and so I figured, wow, well, geez, I don't think it was Mike Schmidt. Yeah, I think so, Mike. So, so, yeah, so so I was like, oh, you know. I'll, I'll go Brooks Robinson. Very good. Yeah, he was. Uh, he, uh, he, I mean, phenomenal third baseman. Just not very fast. That's all. My my first baseball glove was a Brooks Robinson. Wow. Glove. Wow. You know, wow. I, I think mine was too. I, I I think actually I think it was for sure. Okay. Uh, here's our thoughts for the day. Uh, did you know the first computer dates back to Adam and Eve? It was an apple. Apple. With limited, <laughs> hold on, with limited memory, just one one bite. bite. Okay, and then everything, hold on, and then everything, crash. Crash. (laughs) Okay, and I got a quick joke for you here. Two rednecks meet on a dusty country road. One of them is carrying a bag labeled chickens. Chickens, eh, says one guy. Hey, if I guess how many chickens you got, will you give me one? Heck, says the guy with the bag. If and you guess right, I'll give you both of them. The other (laughs) scratches his head and says, is it five? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right tune in new math next. what's that new math new math exactly tune in next week to sports econ one-on-one we're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective probably telling more jokes too and asking more sports trivia questions thanks for listening on behalf of our team i'm your host edward brown we'll see you next week good night america see you, america adios oh.